Hello everyone. Welcome to the Portland Youth Philharmonic's educational concert. We're very happy you're here. My name is David Hatner and I've been the musical director of Portland Youth Philharmonic since 2008. This concert is a slightly different version of the concerts we normally do in the concert hall each year. Greetings, my name is Larry Johnson and I've been the conductor of PYP's Conservatory Orchestra since 2005. Like most of you, we have spent the past year separated from our friends and fellow musicians. Therefore, PYP faced a huge challenge, which was to create performances without meeting each other to rehearse. Fortunately for PYP, we made many new friends this year that were living composers. All of the composers you will hear in our program today wrote pieces for our musicians to perform remotely this season. During this past season, PYP musicians learned over 30 brand new pieces of music. Composers from all over the world took up the challenge of creating music which would be interesting and challenging for our musicians to play only at home. The composers also supplied a click track that our musicians used to synchronize their performances. That's the same, same technology that movie composers use to keep the video and their music together. Today, you are going to meet six of these composers and hear the music that they wrote for our PYP musicians. They each recorded special introductions for their pieces just for you. You'll also hear members of our Philharmonic Orchestra who will introduce their instruments. You will meet all the instruments of each of the four families within the orchestra in this order, woodwinds, percussion, brass, and strings. You'll also get to hear the instruments, how the instruments are played, and hear each instrument group play fun arrangements. You'll also hear performances by members of three of PYP's main ensembles, our string ensemble, our conservatory orchestra, and our philharmonic orchestra. All of these musicians worked very hard preparing their parts for this concert. Be sure to write us and tell us which is your favorite piece. Also, please have a look at some of PYP's other videos. There are many other pieces you will enjoy. This concert is made possible by many of our generous sponsors, and you can see their logos on the screen now. Please be sure to thank them, and thank you. Enjoy the music, everyone. Hi, I'm Macy and I play the flute in PYP. The flute is a woodwind instrument and to play it, you blow across this hole. And at the same time, your fingers are pressing different combinations of keys down. The flute is different from other wind instruments because instead of directly blowing into the instrument, you have to blow across it. And this is what it sounds like. It's a double reed instrument, which means that the way that we make sound on the oboe is with this, which is called a reed. It's two finely scraped pieces of cane tied together on something called a tube. And you can play the reed by itself, it sounds something like this. Anyway, this is what the oboe sounds like. instrument, you blow air through it, the reed vibrates, and it makes a beautiful sound. This is the bassoon, and it is played by having two pieces of wood really close together. Um, and you blow air through that, which is called a reed, 
and it makes this noise. And with the instrument, it sounds a little more pleasant. The bassoon can play both really short and really long, playing short. Or really lyrically and really long. This is the contrabassoon. It is the auxiliary instrument for the bassoons, and it is the lowest in the woodwind section, and depending on the ensemble, the whole orchestra. The contrabassoon has a much larger reed in comparison to the bassoon, and that's because if you have a larger instrument, you need a larger reed to help play those lower notes. It sounds like this. And with the instrument, As well as the bassoon playing very lyrically and very short, the contra can also match that. And playing very short. Hello, I'm Albert Ayumas. I'm the composer of Aksak Disco. This, this piece um, brings two of my loves together, um, the folk music of Turkey and dancing. Um, I'm a person who cannot dance, but I love listening to dance music. And I wanted to create a piece um, that puts together Turkish folk music and disco style of 80s and 90s. Um, and the final result of this is a, is a dance um, where nobody can dance to, um, because uh, throughout the piece, if you try to clap, you would never be able to um, catch the beats. I try to uh, make it confu confusing, and a little bit challen challenging to follow, um, but you st but you will still hopefully uh, feel the energy of uh, dancing. Uh, so I hope you like this um, this piece, Aksak Disco. Thank you.
Hey, my name is Evelyn Knight and I'm a percussionist and today I'll be showing you three instruments. So this is called the triangle. You can probably guess why it looks like a triangle. Um, and you hit it by striking it with, it's called a triangle beater. It's just normally a metal mallet. And you just try to hit it in like the same spot to get the most like tingy sound. So somewhere like right here. All right, it's pretty cool. This is called a xylophone. You've all probably seen one before. Um, it's made out of wood and you eat it by striking it with mallets. I'm using rubber mallets today, so it'll sound like this. And last but not least is that marimba. It's kind of like a xylophone in that it's made out of wood and it's pitched, uh, but it's much more resonant sounding and you hit it with yarn mallets. So this is what it's gonna sound like. Now, of course, there's a lot more instruments. A percussion instrument is basically anything you can make a sound by hitting. So clapping, anything like that, is technically a percussion instrument. Uh, but using these three instruments, I put together a piece. I hope you recognize the tune. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gordon Wrencher, and I'm here to introduce you to my piece for percussion ensemble, The Year of the Rat. Many of you have probably never heard of percussion ensemble, which is a group made up entirely of percussion instruments. A percussion instrument is any instrument that you can strike, shake, or scrape to make a sound. In a classical symphony orchestra, the percussion section is usually fairly small and does not often play a large role in the compositions. Of course, in a percussion ensemble, we're all very important. This piece is scored for glockenspiel or orchestra bells, which is a kind of small metal xylophone. It's also scored for two marimbas, which are wooden, like a xylophone, but much bigger and much lower sounding. And it's also written for two drum set players. The Year of the Rat, as a title, came from the year 2020. In the Chinese zodiac, the year 2020 was known as the Year of the Rat. There are other years named after animals. I was born in the Year of the Rabbit. There's also the Year of the Dog, the Year of the Dragon, and several others. I hope you enjoy this piece, The Year of the Rat.
Hi, this is the French horn. It's a brass instrument made out of tubing wrapped into a coil that can reach around 13 feet when you unravel it and is mainly played by pressing these three keys and the thumb valve to produce different notes. It has a very wide range of high to low notes and it sounds like this. <laughs> This is the trumpet. It has three valves, which you can use to change the note, and a mouthpiece, which you buzz into like this, to create the sound. The trumpet is a very versatile instrument, which means it can be used to play classical music such as this, This is the trombone. It is an instrument that is played by buzzing and moving the slide up and down like this. Here's an example of Amazing Grace. Hello, I'm here today to give a demonstration of the tuba. This is a tuba. Now the tuba I'm playing on is a B-flat tuba, which means it's tuned to the note B-flat. And the thing about the tubing of a B-flat tuba is if you were to unravel it all and stretch it all out, it would be about 18 feet long, which is the height of a really tall giraffe, give or take. Now the way you play the tuba is you have to buzz your lips. Which is really silly, but it helps you blow into the mouthpiece properly. Now the tuba in the orchestra is responsible for the low register, because it can play the lowest notes. But tubas also have really cool music written for them. Hi, my name is Bruce Stark, and I'm a composer. I was born and raised near San Diego in the Southern California area. And after I went to college, I lived in Japan, in Tokyo, for many, many years. And I came back to the United States, and I've been living in Redmond, Washington, near Seattle, for the last eight years. So I composed a piece for brass ensemble and percussion called The Vigor of Hope. Now, what does that mean? I composed it during the pandemic and I wanted to express through music how if you have the belief that things are going to get better and the hope, it gives you the energy and the motivation, vigor is energy, to, to do your best to get through the tough, tough stretch and those better days will come. Uh, the piece kind of has two faces. One is sort of serious, mysterious kind of music and the other is bright, happy music and uh, sort of like the way when you have a sunny day right after cold and wet weather. Uh, it feels so good. In the same way, in this piece, I'm, I try to set up the happy, fun music with this more serious, tense music. So I hope you enjoy it, The Vigor of Hope. Thanks for listening, and everybody take care. Bye-bye.
Hello kids, boys and girls and everyone else. My name is Gabriel Meneses. I am the composer of Four Elephants. This is a music that I wrote specially for the PYP Orchestra for woodwinds and brass ensemble. Okay, so look, it's basically a fugue. A fugue is kind of a canon. It's uh, when you play a melody and then when you finish, someone else is going to play the same melody while the first one is playing other line. Okay. When the second finish, the third is going to play the same melody while the second and the first one are playing all the lines as well. So in this case, there are four elephants, so you will hear the melody four times at the beginning. And it sounds like this. So basically when you hear that melody is because a new elephant is adding to the story. So once everyone is added to the to the story, you will hear this like big noise, the whole orchestra playing at the same time, because all elephants are marching at the same time. And then in the, in the center of the piece there is a dark passage which represents the night and the threat that the darkness brings with it. After the sun rises again, and we have a new day with a happy ending. So I hope that you enjoyed this piece uh, the same way that I did writing it. Uh, so be nice, be good, keep doing music, and be safe. Bye.
This is the violin. It has four strings that can be played with the bow or plucked with the fingers. This is how it sounds. This is the viola. It has four strings that can be played with the bow or plucked with the fingers. It sounds like this. Hi, my name is Kira and I play the cello. The cello is one of the lowest instruments in the family of string instruments because we can go all the way down to the C string, which sounds like this. It can also be plucked using our finger, like, like this. Um, and then we can also go up really high on the A string, like this. So now I'll play, I'll demonstrate a tune that might be familiar to some of you. Hello, I'm Steven and I play the upright bass, also known as the double bass. The bass has four strings and you can pluck them or use a bow. The bass plays some of the lowest notes in the orchestra and uh, is very versatile and can span many genres as well as different types of basses. Hi, my name is Zakari Dixon Vanderveer, and I am a composer from Southern California. You know, I started learning music not much older than many of you watching. I began to learn the violin in fourth grade, and then a few years later, I began to start composing for my friends at school. Then when I was in high school, I learned the viola, which is now my main instrument. This next piece that you will hear is called Citronella Sunsets. Now, what is citronella, you might ask? Well, citronella is a scent that is used to keep mosquitoes away. When I was writing this piece, I was thinking about the summer evenings and all the many fun activities that my family and friends and I love to do, such as going to concerts, going to eat ice cream downtown, or even strolling at the local farmer's market. Now the thing I don't like about the summer is all of the mosquitoes that tend to bother us when we're spending our time outside. So it's a good thing that I don't mind the smell of citronella, and maybe I even like it just a little bit, because that helps us to keep having our good time. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy Citronella Sunsets.
Hello friends, my name is Eduardo and I am the composer of the work you are going to watch next. I am from Argentina, the southernmost country of the Americas, and my country is covered by wide grasslands that we here call the Pampas, through which horses and cattle move freely over large areas. The work you are going to hear is for string instrument, a string orchestra. In this piece you will notice that sometimes the whole group plays together and sometimes only a small group of five instruments, one of each from the family, plays. So this is kind of a conversation between a small group and the whole orchestra. This kind of conversation is called Concerto Grosso, an Italian name because it was invented in Italy about 300 years ago. The work is called Allegro Brioso, again an Italian name, which means fast and brisk with energy. And the image that uh, can accompany you while you listen is that of a herd of horses galloping freely and with energy across the prairie, across the pampa. I hope you enjoy the piece. Ciao.